Hi everyone, I am Kelly Schaffner. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to December. Happy holidays and happy Vlogmas. You and I will both probably tire of hearing that statement, happy Vlogmas, but I'm here to tell you I am participating in Vlogmas this December, but I'm doing it Kelly Schaffner style. You will be seeing more videos from me in December, but not every single day. I sure hope that you will subscribe and join me. I mean, get you some eggs nog or some hot chocolate and let's celebrate the holidays together guys that would be awesome today's video i am so proud of myself it is december 1st and i am coming at you with a what sold video i always admire the people that on the first of the month put out a video highlighting all of their sales in the prior month. And I have never ever done that. And there is only one reason that I am doing it today because here it is on Cyber Monday, the biggest sh online shopping day in the history of the world. I had zero sales. So I don't have any shipping to do today, and I thought I would rearrange my schedule and get this video out for you on December 1st. So this is a What Sold video for November of 2021, and I am filming it on the last day of November. I have received one sale today, and if there are any more sales besides that, I am going to tack on a little note at the very end of this video so I can try to give you the best information that I have. So thank you so much for joining me. If you're curious to see what my sales look like, this is not an entire outline of all the sales that I had in November. I am focusing only on Poshmark. I'm here to tell you uh, some of the highlights, uh, some of the lowlights, and a snapshot of some of the things I'm really, really happy to see leave my house. I call those my cartwheel sales. I don't know why I call them that. I should call them happy dance sales. The sales that I'm really happy for different reasons, many different reasons. I'm happy to see them move on to their forever homes. I do have some notes here because, because I had this extra time today. I was able to compile some numbers and I have to refer to them. Pardon me if I look down. Uh, November was a good month. I'm satisfied with November. October was a better month, but I'm satisfied with November. And I think there was some variables that played into my November numbers. I'm not going to make excuses. I'm really not here to make any excuses because when I'm making excuses, it really doesn't benefit my business. I really need to look for the causes and conditions that directly relate to my number. So that's what I'm going to try to do here today. I'll give you my theories and my thoughts, and I'm curious to hear what you think about my theories, okay? So in about, I would say the past six months, I've noticed a correlation between the number of sales, the total number of sales that I have and the total number of brand new listings that I put up on Poshmark. And those two numbers have been so very close to one another. And it's something I've been paying very close attention to. And I'll tell you what, I listed 201 items in the month of November, and guess how many sales? My total number of sales on Poshmark I had. Did you guess? Write it in the comments. You guys, will you write it in the comments? I'm so curious what your first uh, thought might be. Okay, I've given you time. My total number of sales in the month of November was 143 quite a bit lower than the number of listings, the brand new listings that I put up. And I do have some thoughts about that. My first thought being of those 201 listings that I put up, 80 of those listings came from a thread up bulk mixed clothing lot order that I had. I'll tell you what, what I think of mystery clothing boxes, guys, especially from Thread Up, you are receiving or I receive items that I believe either number one, Thread Up was not able to sell on their 
uh, website or number two, ThreadUp did not want to sell. And so I purchased those items at a big discount, but that is what I filled my store with in November. So maybe not items that customers are really searching for, especially not in Q4 when so many people are searching for holiday gifts. A big portion of my listings came up came from my thread up bulk mystery unboxing, which I am really, really happy to report that as of yesterday, every single thing that I am going to list from that order is listed. Yes, I am conducting a little experiment, guys, and if you're not familiar with that, I will link a playlist in the description below. You can kind of follow along. I am going to do an update video. I'm not going to talk too much about ThreadUp or even the items that sold from that ThreadUp order because really it hasn't been, um, there's not much to report. Okay, I'm going to jump into the different categories I sold in because some of these categories, you won't be surprised, they don't seem to look much different every month, but I still like to report on them. I sold six bundles. I'm happy about that. I don't put bundles together for buyers, but I'm always pleased when a buyer takes the time to put a bundle together, and I sold six bundles, so happy about that. I sold one bra, only one bra. I don't have many bras listed. I do have a great big bin of intimates filled with bras and stuff like that that will get listed. I I'm guessing they're going to get listed in December. So maybe my bra sales will go up in December. I sold two handbags and I'm happy with that because I really don't source many handbags. I don't really enjoy sourcing or listing, photographing, measuring. Handbags are not my thing, guys, but I occasionally pick one up and I sold two this month and I also sold two skirts, another category that I have a very hard time selling. So I'm always happy to report that sometimes skirts sell and I sold two in November I sold three pairs of pants. I mean like dress pants, not denim. And I want to address one pair of pants that was sold in November. And it was a pair of cabby brown dress slacks. And I want to address this because I so often talk about the highlights or how happy I am that something I had forever sold. But I want to talk about this because I think we don't talk about it enough in the reselling community. You see a lot more of it on Instagram, but very little of it here on YouTube on this pair of pants that I sold, I got a one star rating. It was a pair of cabby brown wide leg dress slacks. They were a size eight. I listed them with all the measurements, with the fabric content, with all of the information that I had, I put in my listing. And the buyer was not happy with her purchase. She said that in her review, she wrote that she owned many, many pairs of cabbie pants and this pair did not fit at all. Uh, unlike, almost like maybe she thought I had switched labels and these were not cabbie pants. Maybe, maybe I'm reading it wrong, but she was not happy with her rating. Guys, it was out of my hands. She did accept the pants. She did give me a one-star rating. I got paid for the sale of these pants. And, you know, I regret that the buyer is not happy with her purchase. I hope that as a Poshmark buyer, she's also a Poshmark seller, and maybe she can uh, resell those, reposh those pants. But... I just wanted to put that out there because sometimes if you sell a lot of items online, you are going to have unhappy buyers. That's just part of doing business. I'm not happy about it. I'd love for all of my buyers to be really extremely pleased with their purchase, but the fact is not all of them are. So I wanted to put that out there that it happens to me. It happens to the best of us. And all I can say is I look myself in the mirror and say, Kelly, did you do the best that you could? And I felt like my description was very honest and I did the best that I could. So moving on. <laughs> I sold 13 dresses. That number's down from past months, but but it will go up again when the weather warms up. I sold 16 pair of jeans, denim in November. I wish I had sold more. I have a lot of denim listed in my Poshmark closet and I'm thinking I might need to purge some of my inventory, maybe buy, sell, trade. I'm not sure how I will do that, but I'll definitely take you along for the ride. 
Then I sold jackets and coats, guys. They did really, really well for me. I sold 19 jackets, coats, or blazers in the month of November. This category really performed well for me, and I sold a lot of coats for over that $50 price range, which brought my average sales price up. So I was very, very pleased with my sale of coats and jackets. And then we move on to my favorite category which was shoes and I only sold 33 pairs of shoes in the month of November that is definitely down from months past and I'll tell you what I believe it is I did not list as many shoes in November as I normally do I, I guys I would sell shoes if I didn't love clothes so much I would sell only shoes I really like listing shoes I love selling shoes and I love sourcing shoes but I sold 33 pairs of shoes and boots I put both together I sold a lot of boots and some of my best sales in November were boots and then my number one category as always is tops and I do combine tops with sweaters anything you can wear on the top part of your body that is not a jacket or a coat 54 tops were sold in November for a grand total of 143 sales I'm going to switch things up in this video and start with my cartwheel flips, the, the flips, <laughs> these sales that I'm really happy for a variety of reasons that I was able to sell the items. And I'm going to start with a Liz Claiborne top. Yes, I listed a Liz Claiborne top in my Poshmark closet. I picked it up at the bins. I remember that it was a black satin button up top and it was new with tags. And that is why I brought it home. It was a bins fine, new with tags. Q4 was coming. I wanted to be ready with my Liz Claiborne. I sold that top for $19 and I'm very happy with that sale. I'll tell you what, I liked the top myself. I have a hard time selling buttons up tops and Liz Claiborne is not a brand that I have had much luck with. I, I don't really put it in my Poshmark closet so when I brought it home I was questioning myself although I would have worn the top myself and so I felt confident that I could sell it and sure enough I sold it for $19 so that was definitely worth a cartwheel. The next sale I was so, so happy about was a pair of Express Wide Leg High Waisted Denim Jeans. And I picked these up on style, basically on style. When I saw them with the big wide legs, I thought someone wants these. And I was right. Someone wanted them. I sold these jeans for $35. And the reason I am highlighting these particular denim in this cartwheel sales portion of this video is because I hear a lot of people talking about not picking up Express and, you know, do what you like to do. But I have had good luck selling Express denim in particular. In the month of November, I sold two pairs of Express denim. In the month of November, I sold two pairs of Free People denim and the Express denim made me more money than the Free People denim. So I just wanted to put that out there for people that are snubbing their nose at Express denim. Or Ex Express is a mall brand that's been around for a long, long time. People know it and people know the fit and people like it. So Express denim is usually what I stick with. I see Express in the bins a lot that I pass by, especially the tops. Although the Portofino work shirts also perform pretty well, but take a second look and run comps on Express Denim and kind of in that same direction. Nine West. I sold a pair of Nine West nude or tan colored flats and honestly off the top of my head guys I don't remember where I got these. If I picked them up myself or if I got them in a thread up mystery box. Nonetheless my cost was low on these and they sold for $25. Uh, Nine West is a brand I personally like. Nine West does make quality leather and suede. They use genuine uh, high quality materials, but they also make textile and man-made shoes. I would steer away from Nine West that is not 100% leather, but if you find the leather, look at the comps because if you are okay with selling shoes at about a $25 price point and putting $20 in your pocket. I was happy to sell these. These shoes, the leather was so incredibly soft. I knew that whoever purchased these shoes would be very, very happy with the purchase. This next sale, very happy with the sale, 
When I received these shoes in a thread up mystery box, I was not excited about them. They were a pair of Lauren Ralph Lauren denim espadrille wedge sandals and it took me it took me a little while to get them listed because I didn't like them. I really strongly considered donating them, but I did get them listed because I was running short on inventory and I got them listed and they sat, as I expected, in my closet for a very long time and received very little interest. I was so happy though that I was able to sell them for $25. Lauren Ralph Lauren is a brand that is really style dependent. If it's a great style, it is probably going to flip, but not everything in that brand is going to move quickly or for a good price. I was happy to move these shoes on. It's a brand that lots of people know and love. So I guess it was a good idea to get them listed. I did make $20. I put $20 in my pocket and then this one, this one was a bad buy. A bad buy that I bought at the bins a couple years ago. I've had this t-shirt for a very long time. It was a Kenny Chesney t-shirt. <laughs> And I got it at the bins and it cost me 80 cents. My cost of goods at the bins in the past couple years was roughly around 80, under 90 cents per piece. And sometimes I just couldn't stop myself from bringing lots and lots of inventory home, even if I couldn't sell it and I would list it. And I have a lot of that in my Poshmark closet and that's going to be part of my December purge, getting rid of items that have been stale for over two years and I've relisted them. I've tried everything and I got an offer guys on this Kenny Chesney t-shirt for $6 and I was so happy to accept that offer. And then I got such a nice love note, a beautiful review. The buyer loved the t-shirt, which really makes me happy. I'm so happy that I was able to find it a good home and I made a profit of $2.25 two years later. Was it worth it? Although the number of sales that I had in November is not quite where I wanted it to be, I had some nice sales prices. Yeah, the, my average sale price raised to my highest ever. So that again was a big plus for me. And I think it's because I sold so many coats, so many boots, so much winter wear, which just tends to be more expensive. So I want to talk about some of those higher priced sales, although these are not necessarily, I will go over my highest priced sale, but some good sales. Um, and the first one I want to talk about, this may should have been maybe a cartwheel sale, but this was a $60 sale of a pair of Australian Lux fur boots that I received in a thread up mystery box. These boots were sold at Nordstrom's. They were very, very unusual. I actually was going to keep them for myself. I wore them a couple times before I listed them. They were just a little bit too short. They were my size, but I could feel the end of the shoe and I said, no, I've got to sell these. And guys, they were listed for a year. Yep, this should have been a cartwheel sale. I had fooled around with the pricing on these boots and I had relisted these boots. I got some low offers on these boots last winter that I did not accept and they sat in my inventory for a year. My average cost on those boxes is like $5.50 and I sold them for $60. Was very happy about that. One of the reasons I was happy about that sale is the boots were so unique and so cool. So I'm glad they went on to a new home. Again, another one that took a long time to sell, but it was still a pretty good sale. Oh guys, this next sale. This is an awesome sale. I sold a coat. It was a Via Spiga coat. It was a Kate Middleton wool jacket. I did share it in a haul. It had a great big fur collar. It was stunning. This coat was given to me by a friend of mine, a friend of this channel, Sophia. Sophia occasionally sends me her clothing, the clothing that she doesn't want. She sends it to me to sell and this coat sold for $80. Dollars. Oh, I knew it was going to sell. It was absolutely beautiful. I received a very nice love note on that coat as well. So happy about that sale. And thank you, Sophia, if you're watching. Yeah, that was great. 
Um, next up, I want to talk about a pair of tennis shoes that sold. I just uh, featured these shoes not long ago in a haul, a couple weeks ago, actually. These shoes sold very quickly. I'm not surprised by that. They are by the brand On Running, On Cloud. This was the 2.0 women's running shoes. These shoes sold for $76 in a matter of days. Again, I did receive low offers on these shoes, but I believe in this brand, guys. I've only sold them twice, and both times they have sold in just days, $76. I'm really happy with that sale. And I would tell you, if you see these shoes out in the thrift, look them up, guys. I think it's worth it. And if you don't pick them up, call me and tell me where you found them and I'll go pick them up. The next sale I am featuring because this is a brand that I love. It was a top. It was called the Didion Top by M.M. LaFleur. And I want to talk about this top. I sold this top for $45. It was a plus size top, which I, plus size sells best for me and any brand. But I was very happy to sell this top for $45. That's a pretty good sales price for just a top, a simple kind of career popover top. And I wanted to talk about this brand just a little bit because I've heard people call it a designer brand. I personally would not call it a designer brand. This is a company that's based out of New York City and they also have offices in DC and they really cater to like that Wall Street woman, that high power executive woman that doesn't have enough time in her day to be concerned about her clothing. That's the type of woman that they are marketing to and they make very nice quality with a lot of attention to detail garments that can be mixed and matched. It's pretty affordable as well. You can pick up an M.M. LaFleur jacket for a couple hundred dollars or a dress for under $200, a blouse for under $100. I don't think it falls into the same category as designer, but it is definitely a premium brand. And M.M. LaFleur buyers know their products and they will pay a little bit more because even at $45, that's about 50% off the MSRP. So keep your eye out for M.M. LaFleur. At this point, it still has a pretty strong resell value. This next sale was a bins find. I picked these boots up at the bins, was very happy to find them at the bins. This was a pair of over the knee boots by the brand Fry. They were called the Lucinda slouch over the knee. I think they were a slouch. I don't remember, but they were a Lucinda Fry boot. I did accept an offer for $106. I'll tell you what, Fry tall boots really perform well for me. Fry shoes and fry booties are not quite as strong as the tall boots, but I was still very happy to turn a bins fine into $106. I've selected five noteworthy sales because they did flip so very quickly and I thought you might want to know about them. You could keep your eyes out for these. Maybe some new to you brands, maybe not, because I think probably all of us know about Levi's 501s. These were a vintage button fly men's 501 denim. My sister found two pairs and we were at the Denver bins. My sister found them. I sold one pair. When I listed these guys, there was a big price differential between the Levi's 501s, what the comps were in the women's market compared to the Levi's 501 button fly in the men's department. I listed the same denim in both the men's and the women's. I kind of compromised on the price at $85. The men's 501 button flies were selling for over $100. For women's, they were selling like in the $50 and $60 price range. I sold one pair of these 501s that I had for $68. I was thrilled with that. I still have another pair available and I did receive a lot of low offers, but I held my ground on them and I'm very happy with the $68 return on an item I picked up at the bins. My average cost on that Denver trip was $1.15 per piece. So yeah, $68 sale price is pretty good for that. Next up, I don't even think I had a chance to share this sweater with you. I picked it up in Denver. It was a Kate Spade alpaca. It was so beautiful, guys. It was like a light blush pink, really fuzzy, extremely soft, 
puff sleeve sweater. I got it listed and it sold before I could even film the video and it sold for $65. $65 for a sweater. I don't have the best luck selling Kate Spade, but I'll tell you what, I've sold two Kate Spade pieces in the month of November. Maybe it is Kate Spade winter winter clothing, you know what I mean? The more heavier weight clothing that sells better. But that sweater sold so fast. I, yeah, I, I don't know what to think. Okay, I'm going to leave that one for last. This is another sweater that I picked up at the bins. It sold for $52. It was called All Things Fabulous. And a lot of people list this brand under ATF. Uh, this was brand new to me. I found it at the bins in Denver. It was new with tags. And that's why I brought it home. It was very similar to like a wild fox sweater kind of looked like it was a pilled fabric and it had a very unique uh graphic on it or design a print it was a fawn a deer a baby deer with a butterfly on its butt and that was all over the sweater now when i looked up the brand i did discover that all of their most of their sweaters i should say had really odd designs on them like that. There were sharks and bunnies and different things like that. They had a pretty good average sales price. So I did list mine high. It sold for $52 and it sold in less than 10 days. So definitely keep your eye out. I am going to put some sold comps of this all things fabulous ATF right here on the screen just in case you have never heard of it before. You can just get an idea for the flavor of the style of this sweater because I, there are mixed comps. There are some low comps on this and there are some extremely high comps, but I would say the average comps on this sweater is anywhere between $40 to $50. Keep your eyes out for that one. This next piece took two days to sell. I was able to feature it in a haul, which I'm so happy I got to share that with you guys. I really wanted my husband to take me out. I wanted to wear this sweater. It was like a sweater jacket. It was a heavyweight button front fur collar by Double D Ranch, which is a high-end Western wear brand. And the funkier the items, the better they sell and for more money. I have sold more basic pieces from Double D Ranch and they just don't sell for as much, but if you can find a unique piece by Double D Ranch, they perform very well. So I was happy that this sweater sold for $75 in less than two days. And finally, my biggest and best sale of the month. I've already talked about it here on my channel, but you know what? It's so great. It deserves to be talked about again. It was a pair of tall boots by the brand Freebird. Freebird is just awesome. I found these Freebird tall uh, cash leather boots at the bins. They laced up on the sides. I believe it was the sides. Maybe it was the back. I don't remember. You're looking at the picture. They were so beautiful. I have found Freebird twice since I started reselling, both times in the bins, and they have a very distressed look to them. And I think that perhaps some people pass them by because they do look distressed. Now, I grabbed these at the Denver bins as soon as they let us jump into the bins, but when I found the Freebird, birds the first time. I found them in the Phoenix bins in a bin that had been picked over. And I think it's that distressed look that sometimes fools people into thinking that these are an old boot, maybe worn out, but that is actually the way that they are designed. Sold these boots for $168 in less than just hours after they were listed. So I was very happy with that sale. That sale helped me recoup a majority of the cost of my Denver trip. So that was awesome. As I mentioned before, my average sales price has been on the rise, which I'm very, very pleased about. I attribute that to better sourcing, to be honest with you. But I can remember, guys, I remember in March, my average sales price was $26 and some change. And I was thrilled with that. So you can imagine it is ten dollars higher only eight nine months later so I feel like my business is moving in the right direction although I also think that a lot of that has to do with the type of items that are selling today boots and coats and outerwear and I know you guys are always curious about my expenses and my shipping discounts if I send an offer 
on Poshmark. Poshmark requires me to offer a shipping discount, which I always offer the smallest, which I think is $1.50 off the total sales price. So yes, I do offer shipping discounts. And my expenses, guys, I did really, really well in November, I spent $395 on product and uh, sourcing on clothing and shoes that to sell in my Poshmark closet, $395. I didn't spend not a penny on shipping supplies or office supplies or anything like that in November. The reason being I was stocked up. I normally, I <laughs> listen to other YouTubers as they stock up for Q4 and I follow their advice. So I was well stocked in November and it probably should carry me through December, we'll see. I do wanna talk about Q4 because my Q4 looks very different from other resellers and I wanna talk about that because guys, I sell pre-loved used clothing. Occasionally I find things to add to my store that are new with tags. When I first started reselling, this is my third Q4. When I first started reselling, I decided to buy some bulk inventory new with tags items and I added all of that to my Poshmark closet and I didn't have a lot of luck with it. You know why? Because nobody wanted the items that I was selling. I bought Macy's liquidation pallets of clothing of which I am still selling today, three years later, and lesson learned, guys. I often learn lessons the expensive way, and I am quite satisfied selling used clothing and the occasional new tags that I am able to find at the thrift store or the bins. But as a result, I don't have a lot of sales as people are out there holiday shopping. I have consistent sales. We'll see if that holds up. I'm going to do an update in the mid-December time and we'll see how sales are going. But I am sharing this with you because if you sell predominantly pre-loved secondhand used clothing on the internet, things may slow down a little bit for you. But rest assured, my experience has been that on Christmas Day, and I believe it's because people get Christmas cash, they start shopping, and that final week of December has made up for the slow days in December. And knowing that, if history repeats itself, knowing that I'm going to have a few weeks in December where I'm going to be able to catch up on some tasks that really need to be done, like purging some inventory and doing some organizing, doing some things I'm going to have a little bit more time for. So wanted to share that. Update will be coming in just a couple weeks. We'll see how that goes. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful, if you found it entertaining. Subscribe if you haven't done so yet, and I will see you very, very soon for another Vlogmas video. Blessings to all of you. Thank you.